Now, I want to bring something up before I go any further. And the, the videos that I do and the shows that I do as I post them, I try and go back and I try and read the comments. And sometimes it's, I, I realize why I really don't want to read the comments. Now, there's a lot of good things said, and I thank you for those who support me in that way. But controversy or the right to speak my mind, I see things a little differently than a lot because of the demonic realm that I've been battling for all these years as a deliverance minister or exorcist or however you want to call it. That I see what evil is, I see how it operates. And when I make a comment or, or I suggest something or I have a statement, it's not going to be received by everybody. And there's no way that anybody can do that and have everyone agree. I get that. But when I make a statement or I say something or even sometimes jokingly, I've got a somewhat of a dry sense of humor. It's Those who know me know what I'm talking about that when I do see things, sometimes they're so offensive, so repulsive, so disgusting, that I'll just do something to try and either smooth it out with myself, justify whatever's going on, or just to not even think about it. And sometimes it kind of comes out sideways. Now, some of the videos that I've posted, especially on Hitler, I want you to know that I'm not, quote, supporting Hitler. But you, you need to understand there's a whole other side to the story. And whether these videos contain all truth or not, the point is to at least observe, to watch, to digest, and to make a decision for yourself and not the narrative that has been forced down our throats for all these years. And it's a lie. Now, saying that Hitler was a complete good guy? No, I'm not saying that. I don't, I don't really know. There are some occultic things that do concern me. But I think his interest in taking care of his country, if those that were the leaders of today in the past in our country had had that same attitude, we would not be in the situation. We may be in a different thing. It may have been worse. I don't know. We'll never know. But the point of it is, I want to hear the facts. I want to be able to make my own decision. And I know that you want to make your own decision. And so those, this is why I wanted to comment on this. So whether Hitler again was a good guy or not, whether he was a monster, there may be something in there somewhere that covers all of that. I don't know. But in either case... To once realize, you know, it's like it's like Mormonism. I can't tell you how many people over the years that I've worked with that it came out of Mormonism. And when they realized that their religion is a cult and that it's a lie, and some go on to research and find out you know, the Masonic roots to it all, that how evil it really is. It has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Moroni, the angel, was a fallen angel. But in either case, when they find out that they've been lied to and that their family has devoted generations and money and time and support and, and really gave into it to find out that it's all a lie, they were very angry. Very bitter, and I get it. It's like finding out that you're married to a bad spouse, a cheating spouse, a lying spouse. And that's a bad situation to be in. When you find out you're married to a narcissist or a psychopath or sociopath, and they played the game and they hooked you, and now you're in this. It's like, it's like our government has borderline personality disorder. None of it makes any sense. Their logic is completely demonic. There's no truth in it. Everything that they say is a lie. 
and everything they do is for their own self-gratification or the support of their party. And I'm not talking about Democrat, Republican. I'm talking about the Luciferian agenda, the New World agenda. And we are seeing it take place right now. It has come to a point that all chess pieces are off the table because there is no return now. The checkmate has been done. And we are sitting ducks for these, for those who have elevated themselves above God, have blasphemed the Holy Spirit, have dishonored Jesus Christ, made a mockery. And by the way, you know, all these Masons, every time you go into a town, I don't care where you go, we, you know, we took a drive here recently and went to Ely and, and Elko and, and a couple others. And every little small town smaller than them, those, was a, a Masonic lodge. Now, how is it all these little towns have a Masonic lodge, Freemasons? So it tells you that something has been in the works for a very, very long time. And this is an indoctrination of our young men as they get older and become the leaders and uh, come into being mayors and governors and, and uh, running the town and you know being on the board and so forth. They all have an oath that they've taken. And in that oath, they recognize, now this is blasphemy from them, that what Jesus Christ did on the cross was a dire calamity. They speak those words. I don't know whether you know that or not. They also renounce God, as well as Jesus Christ, and accept a relationship with Lucifer, the light saver. So the world is a lie. The news is a lie. All of them. I don't care who it is. Fox, CNN, MSN, CBS, NBC, ABC. All of them are all liars. In there is the basis of the Masonics, the Cabal, Luciferianism, witchcraft, divination, all of them. Republicans, Democrats are now working together. I've told you that the Democratic Party is a communist party based in Luciferianism. And with the Republicans bending over and giving them everything they want, and many of them, by the way, are rhinos, the U.S. government is not our government. Oh, they lied and they took the oath and they said that they would uphold the Constitution. They lied. The banks, the dollar is a lie. All is a lie in our fiat money. All controlled by just a few. A few who are demon-possessed. Police departments are corrupt. NSA, CIA, DOJ, the CDC, FBI, all corrupt. The Pentagon, corrupt. Every agency that has something to do with the population of the United States and other countries have been infiltrated a long time ago. Remember I told you that there was a Masonic Lodge in every town that I've ever gone through. Some have closed up, some have reopened, but they were there over the years to indoctrinate the men who should have been men of this country to support it, to protect it, to build it, in such a way that it honors God and not defile him. And the FBI, boy, I'll tell you, just I just shake my head about the corruption they do. So how can this be? How can all of them be against the people, you and me, us? How so many are involved? I mean, this is a this is amazing. Evil has been with us from day one. Look what took place in the garden. Whether you believe in Genesis or not, the point of it is 
that there is evil. That's how I became a Christian. That's how I became a believer as I was dabbling in the occult back in the 90s. I didn't know what I was doing. I opened up a door, got myself into a bad situation, went into a dimension, you know, whether you want to call it astral traveling, whatever. And I saw evil for what it is, and it, it absolutely was terrifying. And I called out. I said, God, make these things go away. Those are my exact words. I had no idea what I was dealing with. All I knew is his love and presence wasn't there anymore. That was what was frightening. The weeping and the wailing and the mashing of teeth, how terrible it was. So evil has been with us for so long, 6,000 years B.C., 2,000 years ago, 100 years ago, the last 10 years, all controlled or influenced by evil. Evil does what evil is, and that's wicked things. Demons are behind it, but, but the ensnaring of humans or, or people, I'm trying to stay away from the, the word human, man, that the bait of Satan has lured them in with an iniquitous pull, bringing them into a desire to have like what was uh, tempted to Eve, to live forever, to have all the knowledge. Well, that's a lie. God's word says that we only live for a period of time, and he doesn't want us to know all things because then we become like Lucifer, who elevated himself above or tried to, thought he was smarter, thought he was better, thought he was more powerful, and lured one-third of the angels, the angelic angels with him. And so they were ensnared, they were lied to, and they were trapped, and now there is no redemption for them. There's no redemption for demons, and demons are separate from fallen angels. So in either case, all of these years... The fallen ones and the demons have influenced mankind generation after generation, family after family, government after government, all taken over by will or force. But in either case, the bottom line is what we're dealing with today. Biden is evil. The Clintons are evil. And all of those that have had association, those who are in the big boys club, Soros, Rockefellers, all of them, they are evil. And the ones on that say that they are conservative, you know, on the Republican side, because they're supposed to be conservative, the rhinos, and by the way, the judgment on them will be harsher by God. Because they've lied to ensnare, to entrap, to make you think that they were good, to make you think. See, this is really a base of what is truly evil. When a person tries to pass themselves off as being good, knowing that they're going to, just like I was talking about earlier with you know marrying somebody and you got a bad spouse. When, when they were really wicked inside, they made you believe they were a good person. And so you went along with it. You accepted them. It's the same thing with evil. It can look good, and then you receive it. And when you receive it, they have you. The snare has been set. The trap has been triggered, and you are captured. And it is not a good place to be. So what calls itself Republican now is evil, because they have sold us out Completely. I don't care who it is. Ron Paul, I saw a, a news thing or a, a take on him where they asked him about 9-11 being an inside job and he denied it. Tucker Carlson, I saw a clip where, you know, he's on he's on Fox. He's supposed to be this, you know, leader of conservatism and give us the true news. They asked him about 9-11 and he, he scoffed. He said, come on. Come on, that's stupid. No, it's a fact. Same thing with the Kennedy assassination. Absolutely, it was an inside job. With cooperation with, I believe, with Israel and all other 
communist connections, Zionist connections. I'm sorry if you don't like hearing that, but it's a fact. And look where it has taken us today. So evil is all around us, and we know that. So it sounds like I only see evil and nothing good about anything. Well, again, after you, you know, you've done this so long and, and you know, I, <laughs> it's funny. I can't tell you how many uh, women have come, you know, to my office, to my ministry over the years. And they were sweet and they were gentle. And, and you know, I think for the most part they were. And then I start praying over them. And then there's this manifestation of this raving biatch that wants to rip my head off. And I think, oh, God, I'm back in the marriage I was 20 years ago. So the underlying evil that's within us, we were told to break, to bind, to cast out, and render to no effect, and remove it. Because light and dark cannot coexist in the same, and the supposable Baptist church tells you that's why a Christian can have demons, and it's a lie. We are to remove the darkness. We are to remove the wickedness in our walk to consecrate. And in this, then we're allowed to have the good work through us. A sweet and gentle spirit, a spirit of truth, a spirit of love. The fruits of the Spirit. But unfortunately, since deliverance isn't done and the church denies it, and most of it's because of the structure of Zionism that has entered into it, which was all by design, then unfortunately I do see evil in most things. We are to hate this world. We are not to be a part of this world. We are to remove ourselves. So the answer is yes, I do see evil in just about everything. Evil is today the main function of society. Note, there are still good people, but they haven't been delivered. And because of this non-deliverance, then they have a spirit of fear. And that spirit of fear can be the main driving force for cooperating with evil. You don't want to oppose it. You don't want any trouble. Again, going back to a bad relationship, sometimes we walk on eggshells only to keep the peace at any cost. And what we do, we sell ourselves out. We don't become what God intended us to be. We, we surrender to the evil that's within them and sometimes even embrace it. You know, you, you can call it whatever you want, but when when something manifests before you and, and you're supposed to be a child of the Most High God bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ and we don't stand against it and and ladies I, I understand you know you, you, you married this big strong guy you know he was handsome and everything else but he was a jerk he was a jackass he was a liar and he's an abusive individual, not just emotionally, but physically. And so you're scared of him. I get it. The way evil has manifested today in both sexes, it actually runs on both sides. There are some wicked women out there. And ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You've met them in the church. You've worked with them. You, you went to school with them. You found out later on that your friend all these years was actually not your friend. Some of you won't even have relationships with other women. So you know what I mean. But in either case, yes, there are still good people. But they're entrapped in a never-ending dissolvement of who they are that they've surrendered and they've given up they're no longer they no longer have a dog in the fight and it's one of the reasons that we've accepted all this sin that's come upon us with homosexuality and transgender and and just i mean it's disgusting and i may be one of the few that still talk about it but i 
easily say it because I've seen the spirits manifest in those that were trying to come out of homosexuality that were so vile and so disgusting. Perversion. I mean, if you could see them, you'd probably throw up. And sometimes there would be a manifestation of the smell that comes from them. You know, death has its own smell. There are other things that have their own odors. But when you have all of these bad things combined at once, the stench is so bad. I can remember one time that there was a manifestation. And it was with someone who was one of the worst I've ever seen. They had been completely taken over. And it was so bad it stopped me in my tracks. I mean, I thought I had fallen into a sewage pit that was sulfur burning. It was it was amazing. So what we've done, we've allowed this to become our society, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada. It's all over. And it's because of this, the stronghold has literally taken us by the throat. And so even though there are good Christians and there are good people, they too, like Stockholm Syndrome, are bound. And it is a terrible thing because that is not where God wanted us to be. This is why he sent his son. And there are churches that have been compromised, leaving us in a particular situation where we don't even know what the Word of God says. There's so many false doctrines out there. Years ago, I had to hit the reset button. My head was so full of this and so full of that, which didn't jive with deliverance, by the way. It didn't, didn't bring any understanding of to, to what I was dealing with when I had a manifestation during a deliverance exorcism or even just clearing a house or even setting an animal free. You know, I've done a couple horses where spirits came into these horses and the, the person bought the horse, you know, got the papers, you know, paid the cash down, got the signature, whatever, you know, is done for transference of large animal. And then they get the animal home and now the animal wants to bite him and kick him and push him up against the fence and crush him. And, and you know, I've come over and, and uh, it's instructed the owner what to do, what to say. And it was just one, two, three. Why was it so easy? Because we have the power and authority over the demonic. The animal was owned by the person who has the power and authority, and by their spoken words, the demons had to leave. And then the animal, the horse in particular, I can remember one in, in particular, became, you know, how horses walk up and put their head down like they want to be petted. It completely changed. So just think what this world be, would be like if we could do this with people. Well, we should be doing it. And the church has been compromised to where they didn't teach it. They said Christians couldn't have demons. And now everything today is evil that runs everything. And a few have any recognition of their power and authority to set things right. And it is a disaster. It is a shame. Because what it means is those people who do not recognize who they are in Christ are the ones getting beaten up. So those who should be in the fight stand down or can't because they're broken, they're wounded, they're incapable of doing anything spiritual. Now, we also have another factor today our food, our water, our air, now microwave radiation, makes us sick, makes us so we can't think. Even, you know, just not being directly hit, being 
on a long-term exposure to it, and I talked about that last week, that over time, we degrade just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, and we get beaten down, and, and then, you know, demons are opportunists. And they'll be in people that you work with and people that you were in a relationship with, and they'll say things to you like a fiery dart. And they take you down and they take you down. And so a lot of you are so beaten and so broken and so wounded that you can't fight. And unfortunately, fear is the number one spirit that infects the greater population, both Christian and non-Christian, all by design, all passed down through the generations. It has been around for a very long time. It's the main ingredient to set the stage for a failure. We now have a generation who are all taking the reins to lead the future, whose minds are corrupted with unclean spirits, narcissism, hatred of truth, They are literally a wicked generation. Most having no concept of the Constitution in our history or a desire to know or learn or reject it because they have embraced communism. But does that really matter now in this late hour? There really isn't much we can do. I mean, think about it. If they, they've been running amok for so long, things are, you know, the stage is set so well, technology is on their side, because, you know, the, the generation I'm speaking of is really useful idiots, I'm sorry. So what I mean is that time has gone by so much that our real concern should be what we can do now with what has been drawn on us. But unfortunately, we have people who are vaxxed. They've taken the jab, the poison, the black goo. We have war on our doorstep. So everything that I just talked about really is has come together to where there, it, it's, it's a snowball going down the hill, that we can't stop it, that to, uh, to talk about it or to try and rectify it or try and do anything really isn't going to do much good. That's how far we've gone. I never thought I would say that. Now, if there's divine intervention and if God gives you a word, then stick with it. You do what he tells you. Each one of us have something that the other person doesn't have in a spiritual gift. Some have more than others, some have this, some have that. In either case, this is a time to be quiet and still, to listen to God, which again is very hard because I talked about how microwave, how cell phones and and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all these other affect us. They irritate us and they, they, they do things to our minds. And, you know, I saw one of the comments where someone said that, you know, that that's not true. Well, I'll tell you what. Cancer is off the charts from cell phones. So something's wrong. So even if I'm only a fraction right, it's still too much. Now, this war game between Putin and Biden may not be real. It may be all a lie. It may be a facade. It may be how they're going to do this great reset. It could be very possible. It can go back and forth. It can go both ways. I don't know. Because of the limited truth and information that we are given, it's very hard for us to come to a conclusion that makes any sense. It's part of this disinformation to flood us with all of this stuff, one side or the other, up and down, and our minds are trying to process it. And since it's not truth, 
then it never will be truth in our spirit. And since it's not truth in our spirit, it doesn't make any sense. And if it doesn't make any sense, it doesn't make any sense. And by trying to rectify it, trying to bring it to some term that we can work with, is an impossibility. And so our nature is that we want to have some something to work with. We want to have some understanding and and so we pick and choose you know the saying is when you chew the meat spit out the bones okay i guess so but you know that little bit of a lie still comes in and sets in and because of the limited truth not having all the facts is a is a problem but regardless if the war is real or not it is an opportunity to alter our world, to destroy what we have been holding dear to us, our family, our way of life. In some way, it's hard to to see any, when, when there's no real future and we know what lies ahead of us, it's very disconcerting. It keeps us from, from having the will or the desire to move forth. And there's a lot of people dealing with depression over this. There's a lot of suicides. And of course, this is what the evil ones want. So in some way, knowing that God is still in control should help you through this. Do you understand? This is very important. Regardless of the circumstances, God is still in control. Meaning, let God's will be done. It's hard to accept it. There's a lot of death and destruction. This this jab is a terrible thing. But in either case, the living, the ones in Christ, the ones that will be here for the fight, especially under the circumstances of this worldly sin that now has become the norm, The people running this world are so evil that, remember, God is still in control. Our sins of this nation, the sins of this world, the things that we have done and how we've rejected Christ and how we've done all these different things, and unfortunately, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The only way to stop it or hit the clear button, it's destruction, per the book of Revelation. Prophecies have been fulfilled. There's much more to come to pass. But in either case, it looks like that's the only way it's going to work out. Look, my children, your children, will be enslaved, will be made to pass, to be made to pass through the fire. Not a good picture. Biden, the Clintons, the Rockefellers, the Bushes, all the ones that were our past presidents and the ones that have been in Congress and Senate, all of them have sold us out. All of them are liars. Every one of them. There is no truth found in them. As horrible as that is, the demonic communist mind, the Luciferian mind, is literally chomping at the bit. And you think it couldn't get any worse because they're chomping at the bit for our children. All of the things that turn the people against themselves, all the different things that they could do, and that is starvation. You think it's by mistake that Biden shut down all the pipelines and now all of a sudden we're in a war with Russia where where a supply of oil comes from? Not all of it. So this drastic raise, rising in, in price for gas is all a lie. It's by design. Everything that Biden did is calculated. He put us in this situation. All the things that turn people The masses into animals is starvation. And when you are cold and you are hungry, 
Because without oil and without the natural resources, that puts us in a situation that only those of the past generations may have known, especially during the wars and and just the survival, the way that they had to live, you know, coming across the United States and and establishing towns and being on wagon trains and trying to survive during the winter and you know we've got uh, we've got places around here that are marked where you know there were people who perished on the trails Donner's Pass is just over the hill here from us and so most of us are not mentally prepared physically prepared or have any idea what to do without the comforts of today's world that is about to all be taken away from us. And understand what Biden is doing is with the cooperation of the Republicans. I don't care what anyone says. His executive orders that he keeps, just like uh, Obama, man, just spitting those things out, taking our property rights, putting us under the U.N., doing everything that is against the Constitution. They should be tried, a tribunal. They should be arrested and tried and held accountable for their lying that they did against the American people, the atrocities. But is that going to come to pass? Well, well, I, you know, this Trump thing, this Trump train is still moving, and they say this is all kind of come around. Well, you know, he didn't exactly drain the swamp in the last run. And here we are in this position. We are in this future of chaos because of them. The so-called elite, you, me, us, are nothing more than a game and a purpose for them because they think this is funny. That's how evil and wicked they are. They are the manifestation of the demons and the fallen angels that run them. You ever notice that some people, you know, I'm sure there can be genes, and, but those like, uh, like George Soros, that man looks like a deflated condom. I'm sorry. You can't get any uglier. Well, the reason is the evil and the demons that are within this thing have come to be who he is. And it's hard to even look at him. You know, he was laughing the other day during an interview about, you know, the Putin regime, how it was going to be the Soros regime in Russia. So you see what's going on? And it means all of us are caught in the middle. And as I said before, this has all happened before. The demons of the past are the end game for the future. Homosexuality is a demonic sickness that leads to infecting our children. It has been accepted so long that the young children are infected. It has been officially embraced by our government and a large part of our population here in the United States and other countries and is now considered normal when it is nothing but nothing but further from the truth it is a sickness it is a disease that is demonically based that is a tear down of society no society that embraced it ever survived and that of course the main understanding is Sodom and Gomorrah the demonic door is open and open very wide because of this behavior and the acceptance of it and unclean spirits come and go at will and then add communism to this whole thing making useful idiots of the ground pounders the people who are infected with the unclean spirits to take over society. But the elite know they cannot allow them to continue when it's all done. If you've listened to me for any length of time, I've said that when you do the work of Satan, 
He smokes you like a cigarette and in time will put you out. So they will fall by the sword as well as those who oppose the sin of the body. As I said, unfortunately many were going to perish over all of this that are good people. But at least they're in Christ. So where does that leave us? You, me, us? Well, with only one option while we still can. And, you know, I, I keep coming back to who we are in Christ. And this is completely surrender to Jesus Christ. I know I have said this over and over again, and maybe there's some new listeners, but you need to hear it. Just like you keep hearing the lies all the time, you need to hear who Jesus Christ is and who you are in Christ. Because you see, in truth, it's all we have left. God will not be mocked. God will finish what he started. Jesus Christ will return and the wicked will be punished. If we have anything to hold on to, hold on to that. Hold on to this statement. Our faith will not be in vain. The time right now is unlike any time that any of us living have ever seen or experienced. There may be some who saw the horrors of World War II and see the whole thing happening all over again. It is no mistake that you are here right now, and I've said this before, and I want to reconfirm that. The spirit you have in you was handpicked by God. Just think about that. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows everything about you. This spirit that he picked, now there's talk about those that volunteer to spirits to come down. I, I'm not going to go into that. But placed in your body for a time such as now. You could have been a hundred years ago. You could have been a thousand years ago. But no, you are here now. You are here now, just like I am here now. So what do you do now? What kind of spirit do you have? Do you have a spirit of boldness? Do you have a spirit of strength? Do you have a spirit of righteousness? Meaning that when people are done wrong, you stand up for them? See, there all these attributes attach to the main spirit, the living spirit that's put into you, that's breathed into you. The attributes that make you who you are, your mind, will, and emotions being your soul, in a specific order. That's why the devil has worked so hard. When, when I say the devil, I'm talking about the demons. Because the devil doesn't care about you. He's dealing with Clinton. He's dealing with Biden. He's dealing with Obama. Cheering them on. You, you remember the old saying, rah, rah, shish, coon, ball? The Ivy Football Leagues, rah, rah? Hmm. Sounds like an old lord to me. calling and conjuring demons. Hmm. So what's in your soul right now? All I know in my soul, I am disgusted with what I see and what's going on. You can imagine if I feel this way, how God feels because he sees all things. He knows all things. He's omnipresent. He has the ability to be everywhere. So whatever is going on or whatever is going to happen in whatever order, God is still in control. So I have a peace in my spirit knowing that. All I can do is what I've been called to do. So Again, with everything that's going on, we're also told to fear not. And as I mentioned a little earlier, that fear was one of the main spirits that comes in, whether you were in the womb when it happened, trauma, let's say that uh, something happened to your mother when she was carrying you, a car accident, a near-death experience, maybe she was abused, 
And in that shattering moment of her soul, an open door can happen and that spirit can slip in and go right to you. And that incident that took place was by design, by the demonic, so that could happen. There is no chance here. So no matter what it looks like now, this is just a flash in the pan compared to eternity. Did you, did you get what I just said? Just be still and know he is God, and Jesus will return. When? Well, it looks like it's going to be soon. But there are more prophecies to fulfill that need to come to pass. More time, but not much, especially with this craziness of the world. So get ready, get right. But remember, these people, these clones, these hybrids like Biden are God's enemy, not just your enemy. So you know how that's going to end for them. And it's not going to end well. Now, do I take any pleasure in that? Mm, well, since they're enemies of God, if we are to be just, meaning that those things that have tried to corrupt us, that have, like Lucifer, still kill and destroy, that there is a relief knowing that justice will be held. I think that's the probably the best way that I can apply that. All right. I was going to have someone on today, and unfortunately it didn't work out. I'm going to still work at trying to make that happen. But uh, we'll just end it for now today. And I, I hope that, again, in this world, it, it's hard to give a lot of, you know, give you something to look up but you know the only thing we can look up to and that's God and sometimes in our darkest hour that's where you're placed just as I was many many years ago that brought me into the deliverance ministry put me into such a dark place that the only way was up the only way was towards the light and that's where we are. Look at the gas prices right now. I mean, I, I spent $100 today filling the tanks up. That's insane. So get ready for a challenge like we have never seen before. But this is where Jesus plus nothing, that's my saying. I didn't coin it, but I love it. Jesus plus nothing comes into your soul and makes things right. All right. God bless. We'll see you Friday. Good night.